So then guys, we've just had the announcement of the brand new MacBook Airs with the M3 chipset inside of them. However, how do they compare to say the M3 Pro MacBook Pros? Well, today I'm going to do a review of specs comparison for you. And we're going to compare the 15 inch MacBook Air with an M3 inside of it versus the baseline 16 inch MacBook Pro with an M3 Pro inside. And with that, Let's get started. So then, starting out then, we have the MacBook Air 15 inch M3 on the left side. And then on the right side, we have the MacBook Pro 16 inch, and this is the M3 Pro. Now I'm going to be comparing the base models of both these models. So this is like the cheapest MacBook Pro M3 Pro you can get for the 16 inch model, and also the cheapest MacBook Air 15 inch model with an M3 chipset, lowest mass of RAM storage, all of that good stuff as well. Unless I say otherwise, obviously. So just remember, Remember that and bear that in mind this comparison but let's get started then first of all with the display type so we're getting an led ips technology in the macbook air 15 inch so this is the same sort of technology we've had in macbooks for many years now so this retina display we've had since you know about 2012 with macbook pros and it came along to the macbook air and it still exists here and then with the actual macbook pro 16 inch then we actually have a newer type of display what's the mini led pro motion display inside of it and this is much more clearer and it's a bit more sharper as well and a bit more brighter too as you will see later on but that's the first thing the actual screen sizes though there's not that too much in it there's only just under an inch in it in screen sizes so we've got a 15.3 inch from the macbook air with the m3 and then the macbook pro 16 inch obviously is a 16.2 inch so as you can see just under one inch difference but it is slightly bigger on the macbook pro for the actual screen screen resolution though on that what does that mean so on the macbook air on the 15 inch we're getting a resolution of 2880 by 1864 whereas on the macbook pro 16 inch we're getting 3456 by 2234 so you can definitely see you're getting a bit more of a sharper picture and to be honest that shows in the pixels per inch where the macbook air we're getting 224 pixels per inch whereas the macbook pro 16 inch with the m3 pro we get 254 pixels per inch instead there and it's also the same with the display refresh rate too so we actually get the standard 60 hertz on the macbook air it's still a brilliant refresh rate it's probably one of the best for 60 hertz out there on the market right now but you do get that pro motion display 120 hertz on the macbook pro 16 inch but there again you do need some apps that need to utilize that ability if no apps actually have been programmed or you know coded to actually utilize that pro motion it will come in at the normal sort of 60 hertz um what you're going to get there so you won't really utilize and see that's so only specific apps fully utilize the pro motion 120 hertz for brightness and true tone both of these have true tone technology and for brightness the macbook air can go up to 500 nits that's the maximum it can go up to whereas the macbook pro 16 inch if you're using an xdr sort of footage or xdr sort of display on that one you get a thousand nits brightness and in fact, if you're even using HDR, you can even go up to 1,600 um, nits in some cases on some footage there. So that is quite good there for people who are doing video editing or, you know, proper pro video editing if you need to use that. But just kind of standard kind of looking at the screen and things like this, then to be honest, the MacBook Pro is just a little bit more ahead than the MacBook Air. Then the next thing then to talk about is the process from the CPU. And this is probably the biggest difference of them all. So the Apple MacBook Air 15 inch comes with the standard M3. So this is the normal M3. It's not a binned version. It's the normal M3 and this consists of an 8 core CPU and a 10 core GPU inside of it. Whereas the MacBook Pro 16 inch has the M3 Pro as the base one and this is a 12 core CPU and also has an 18 core GPU. So you can definitely see there's definitely a bump up there. More than you know 50 
to about um, 70% in more power than what you're going to get with the MacBook Air, depending if it's CPU or GPU on that one. So that is where the biggest difference. But both of the actual, or not just both, but you know, both the GPU and CPU, the actual cores themselves are actually clocked at the same rate. So you're not going to get sort of faster cores inside either model. They're at the same amount of speed. You just get more of them on the M3 Pro in that MacBook Pro. But just to show you here, guys, in benchmarks, just to show that, then the multi-core score for Geekbench 6 on the MacBook Air, you get 11,601 on average. You might get slightly more, slightly less than that. Whereas the multi-core score on the MacBook Pro 16-inch with the M3 Pro, you get 14,241, give or take. Like I said, depending on sort of different Geekbench that you run at it, you might get a few less or a bit more higher there. So it does depend. But you get the idea here. We're talking around about a sort of 4,000 sort of score difference there, or 3,500 score, I should say, more like sort of difference there. So yeah, that is one thing to be aware of. The other thing to be mainly aware of is the MacBook Air 15 inch has no fan inside of it. And what that means is that if you were going to do kind of proper pro apps for a long period of time, so say more than 30 minutes of, you know, 4K video editing, your MacBook Air is going to start to get hot and it will throttle and start to slow down because nothing can keep it cool. Whereas the MacBook Pro with the M3 Pro does have a fan inside and it can keep those cores cooler. So it can actually cool them down if you're starting to work on it for like hours at a time doing your editing or things like that. So it is something to remember there that obviously the MacBook Air is more designed for people who are studying and things like this, doing lighter tasks, you know, using Word, uh, using the Microsoft Suite doing emails, checking website, your social media, a light bit of video editing, maybe doing your TikTok on it and things like that. But that is probably about it, really. You can obviously, like I said, do pro apps, but obviously it's going to, you know, start to throttle after a while. And that's where you'd probably say go for maybe the MacBook Pro instead. But for the RAM amounts, there are some differences here. So with the M3, you start at eight gigabytes of RAM. And I think that's quite shocking to be honest. Apple really needs to change this with the M4. I'm not happy really with that. But it does start with eight gigabytes of RAM. And it means that if you open up say more than 10 tabs, had your Outlook open and your Word open, it's starting to go into struggle a little bit in speed, you know, moving around swapping between tabs and things like this so just be aware of that whereas if you've got 18 gigabytes of ram what's starting out with the uh, macbook pro you're going to be probably a bit more better there you can easily open up say i don't know probably about 30 tabs and do the same thing you have no problems there whatsoever but obviously the options for the m3 you get a choice of 8 to 24 gigabytes of ram but with the m3 pro not the m3 max you only get 18 or gig 36 gigabytes of ram to choose from obviously with the m3 max you can pick more but obviously we're talking about the m3 pro today then for the storage amounts you actually get a choice between 256 gigabytes to 2 terabytes on the macbook air there but you get 512 gigabytes to 4 terabytes on the macbook pro so definitely be aware of that that you can actually get more ram on the macbook pro than the macbook air then then for ports this is again a bit of a difference here you only get two usb-c ports they are thunderbolt 4 ports as well um, or USB 4 ports on the MacBook Air and you also get the MagSafe port too. But with the MacBook Pro 16 inch, you actually get three of those same USB-C ports, you know, Thunderbolt 4, USB 4, all of that. But you get MagSafe, you also get a HDMI 2.1 port and you also get an SD card slot or SDXC slot also inside of it. It's definitely more extra ports inside there. The operating system on both of these machines is Mac OS 13 Sonoma. And obviously we all get a new operating system this summer in 2024 and most likely that both of these machines will be able to operate and get the latest new version of Mac OS probably for the next five to six years and then probably an extra year of security updates too so you've got a long long time on both of them probably about the same amount of time they'll both expire then for the actual battery life there is a difference here then the MacBook Air 15 inch comes in the battery life of up to 18 hours whereas the MacBook Pro 16 inch comes up to 22 hours and the main difference here is definitely to do with the actual size of both of these obviously the macbook air is a thinner design as well it doesn't have so many components and things like this inside of it so it's definitely thinner whereas the macbook pro is a bit more of a chunkier design has a bigger battery and obviously can give you that better battery life
For charging wattage as well, uh, we've got a MagSafe 35 watts on the MacBook Air. This is what comes inside the box, and you've got the choice here. Whereas the MacBook Pro comes in the box with 140 watts here for the M3 Pro model. And as I was talking about earlier, for the actual weight-wise, this is the, definitely showing you in the size here. The MacBook Air comes in at 1.51 kilograms, just you know, just close to 1.5 kilograms, whereas the MacBook Pro 16 inch weighs in at 2.14 kilograms. So yeah, it is definitely going to be about 50% heavier on average or about 40% heavier than what we got with the MacBook Air. So yeah, you will notice the difference that it is a heavier model. Then for the actual stereo speakers inside it, the MacBook Air comes with a standard four speaker setup inside of it, and it's quite a good system to be deadly honest, but the MacBook Pro definitely trumps here with its six speaker system and um, with woofers too so it's probably one of the best sound systems I've ever heard in a laptop is in the MacBook Pro uh, range so yeah just be aware of that for Wi-Fi both of them have Wi-Fi 6e they've both got the latest sort of version apart from Wi-Fi 7 but that hasn't really fully rolled out yet probably the next generation will get that then for the actual webcam, next of all, both of them have that notch inside it, love it or hate it, and they both have a 1080p webcam inside of those. So yeah, that is really, really good to utilize that for doing things like Zoom calls, team calls and whatnot. Then finally, the actual price. So the MacBook Air, the model we've been talking about, the base 256 gigabyte model, this is with eight gigabytes of RAM inside of it and the standard M3 chipset, comes in at 1,299 US dollars. Whereas the MacBook Pro with the M3 Pro, again, the standard M3 Pro, you know, not a binned version with 512 gigabytes and also 18 gigabytes of RAM, comes in at 2,499 US dollars. So there is a difference there. We're talking almost double the amount, give or take about $50 there. So yeah, that is quite a lot. Then for colors, we have four colors for the MacBook Air. We have silver, space gray, gold, and also the midnight. The midnight has been upgraded and supposedly Apple say it's not too bad now with fingerprints. Whereas with the MacBook Pro, we have the silver and we also have the space black color two just the two options there and with that will you be buying yourself a new macbook air or the new pro so then i think we can conclude from this if you are going to get yourself the macbook pro with the m3 pro inside of it 16 inch model it's going to cost like almost double the amount of an m3 macbook air 15 inch obviously you're going to get a slightly bigger screen size you are getting around about 50 to 60 percent more power than what you get with say the m3 standard sort of chipset inside of it you also get the better screens better ports all of that good stuff but i just can't see in my honest opinion it's worth it for double the amount of money unless you're actually going to really use all those ports um, obviously you know really use that screen out well with the pro motion everything like that using those extra four hours of battery i could just go on forever here guys but you get the idea on average we're talking about 50 to 60 percent in kind of actual sort of speed increase there on what we're getting with the multi-cores and obviously we're getting more than double the amount of ram as well inside of it with the starting out with 18 gigabytes but still two thousand five hundred dollars compared to one thousand three hundred dollars it is a big difference there so do consider that though for your needs and with that guys so it's time to wrap up this video too so if you have enjoyed watching this comparison please do press the like button also at the same time you want to hear the latest apple news reviews and comparisons like today make sure you subscribe to this channel and also hit that notification bell until next time guys i'll see you really soon take care bye bye